Hi, Cat's Cradle here. If you've watched my channel for very long, you know how very fond I am of my raspberry plants. Unfortunately, last week I picked the last little bit. I got a couple of little bowls off of them. Still beautiful raspberries, but I wanted to get them all off before uh, the first hard frost came. So went out uh, a couple of different times and picked a, a few little bowls here. The raspberries produced very heavily this year and I was very pleased. I was a little worried when we had such a late spring, uh, but they they bore pretty much from uh, June to, well, the end of October. So I'm very, very pleased. But one of the things I do right uh, after the first couple of little light frosts is I try to go out and pick red, red, red raspberry leaves because they make a wonderful tea. And it's at this point that I want to uh, put in the little disclaimer that I am not a doctor, I am not a certified healthcare professional uh, in any way, shape, or form, and I am not giving you medical advice, but I'm telling you the benefits of drinking red raspberry leaf tea are, are well documented. In fact, if you put in that very uh, little quote, benefits of drinking red raspberry leaf tea, uh, you'll pull up about 156,000 references to that uh, online. So I will post a couple of those for you below this video in the show more section in hopes that you will see uh, what the benefits are. I like to cut the leaves off of my stems. You can pull them off by hand. Uh, they're a, the stems are a little prickly so sometimes it's just easier just to go ahead and snip them off with scissors. Now there's two different kinds of canes here. Uh, and cane is just the word you use for uh, the stem or the plant of, of the raspberry. The red one is one that's almost a full year old. It came out the very first part of the growing season. And you can see it has it's really dark there. I'm going to pull back the leaves so you can see it a little bit. It's almost a burgundy maroon kind of color. The other kind of cane is the really new ones that only came out in the last few months. And they're really green see the difference there? I like to collect my leaves off those younger canes because the leaves tend to be less beat up. The older canes sometimes are kind of yellowed like this or bug eaten and uh, they just don't make as as nice of a dehydrated leaf so I try to stay away from those. You can see I've collected a whole colander here full from uh, big leaves to little leaves but I try not to get any that appear dirty or bug eaten or have holes in them. They're just really beautiful. The other thing I like to do is I like to collect them a couple of days after a rain because usually that washes the dust off or, or any kind of debris that's on it. But I then take them to my sink. I, I clean a sink very, very well, fill it with cool water, and then submerge my leaves and I use my hand to kind of agitate it and swish it around. You may have to do it a couple of times. If you look at the bottom of your sink and you see a lot of dirt in there, just wash it again. And then I let them uh, drain in my colander. I get as much water off there as I can. I won't get it all off because the leaves have a tendency to kind of stick together once they're wet. And so uh, even when I take them to the dehydrator, they're very wet. So I just shake as much of it as I can out. It doesn't hurt if it sits there a few minutes and just drains on out. And usually this is what I collect, just one big colander full. That's enough to, to get me through the winter. I certainly could have collected more. There's, you know, still tons of leaves left, but this is really, this is really all I need for the winter. And then I take them to the dehydrator and I just start pulling the leaves apart. Like I said, they kind of stick together with the water. And this is one of the exceptions. Usually when I use the dehydrator, I put everything in a really flat single layer. But I have so many leaves here that they would more than fill my 8 or 10 dehydrator trays. So I do stack these a couple of a couple of layers thick and they overlap a little bit because after the moisture is, I mean, after the surface water is off the leaves, then I'll be able to go back to those trays and, and separate them much more easily to make sure everything dries thoroughly. This takes a little time, but it's well worth it. 
it's kind of hard to describe what red raspberry leaf tea tastes like. It's very mild and very pleasant, and I like combining it with other flavors, so I may just throw in a bag of uh, peppermint tea as well and let it steep. It's, I, I find it very pleasant and delicious. You can uh, add sugar or honey or lemon juice, whatever you like, just like you would prepare any other herb tea. Here's Preparé bringing me a another tray. We're just going to stack them up and keep going until I get a whole dehydrator full. Now, here's what it looks like after they're dehydrated. It doesn't take too terribly long. I just did these overnight. The bright colors are the leaves that are facing up, and the paler color is the bottom of the leaf. They're really very beautiful, and I believe in drying herbs at the lowest setting I could possibly get away with and still have them dehydrate perfectly. So I think I dehydrated, dehydrated these at about 110 degrees probably. It allows them to retain all their color. Look how pretty they look with the leaves all curled there. So I just take them off the dehydrator and put them in a big old bowl. And then I take my quart jar and I just begin pushing them down in there. And this batch that I made made a full quart jar and a little more. There they are all stacked up. When I want to use them, I have a little tea ball that has holes all in it, a, a, a tea infuser. There's a little extra bag I had that I'm going to give to a friend. I just put my, I just crush up a little bit of the tea leaves and put them in that diffuser and then I put them in my tea cup and pour uh, the boiling water right over them and let them steep. Nothing could be simpler than drying these leaves and it costs me nothing except for the little tiny bit of electricity, about eight cents an hour that I used to dehydrate them and the rest of it was just an investment of my time going out harvesting the leaves, coming in and stripping them off of the stems washing them, laying, out, laying them out on the dehydrator trays, and then uh, plugging in the plug on my dehydrator and dehydrating them. It's just as simple as that. Um, they easily fit in, in a quart jar, or you could put them in a bag, or you could vacuum seal them. So lots of great uses from the raspberries. Both the leaves and the fruit are loaded with antioxidants. Uh, both of them are very good for us. Be sure to check the references below so that you can find out what the benefits are of drinking red raspberry leaf tea. Until next time, this is Cat's Cradle.